I give the call to the Honourable Brian Walker. Uh, thank you, Acting President. I'll say, first off, that uh, my inclination is that I will support this bill. That's not to say that I support this bill unreservedly. Uh, there are questions there. And I, I would like it to be known that the points I make need to be considered, taken seriously. My opposition to the uh, Row 8 stemmed from the time when, in the previous the Barnett government, uh, they engaged in what I would describe then as environmental vandalism. And it wasn't just that, it was the, the concept that they were quite comfortable at um, r reviewing the Environmental Protection Agency and then putting force there to change what had been uh, a rejection of the plans, for very good reasons. And as an environmentalist, as someone who treasures our world, I thought that was actually quite unhelpful for the people of Western Australia. Not to say that Row 8 is a necessarily a bad thing, just that the way they were going about it wasn't really something I could recommend. I lived in Bibber Lake at the time, and for me it was actually more personal. I know the area, I've walked there, I treasure the area. And the, the, when I was driving past on the way to my practice in Cunnanopin, uh, and looking at the, 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 the scar on the landscape, every time just the anger rose. It took a long time before it settled on that drive, that three-hour drive to Cunnanopin. So I was, I was personally hit by that. I have to ask, though, we, we know that this is not going to happen. No, there's no action going to be taken for the next four years. It took four years in the previous parliament. There's no urgency for this to be done right now. So my question is, you know, why the high priority? And I'm reminded uh, of, uh, look, I suppose on sleepless nights, you do tend to turn to the uh, Western Australia La State Labour Party's policy platform. And um, a few lines are there, I'll, I'll quote them for you. WA Labour is committed to a government which will develop integrated and sustainable economic and social policies which benefit the whole community. I think I'm a Labour Party member. Another one. The fundamental objective of WA Labour's economic policy is to ensure the well-being and improve the quality of life of all Western Australians. Yep, I'm a Labour Party member. And then this one here. The war on drugs approach to reducing the use and community damage from illicit drug use has been a failure and may actually be doing more harm than good. I'm definitely a Labour Party member. Welcome. But then it goes on to say, Labor, WA Labour will plan transport infrastructures to optimise the immunity of urban areas and to encourage innovation and flexibility. Ideal. Wonderful. I love it. It really goes here, for me, about environmental protection. The bushland, the, the flora, the fauna, and also respect for the indigenous home. If you read from the, the, the Coburn Council, their wonderful um, uh, uh, booklet, the uh, Biliar Bujar, which explains the indigenous history uh, of that area and how important it is to indigenous culture. I think we ought to respect that as an indigenous home, a camping ground, and a place where culture is recognized. On the other hand, I am also a resident of North Fremantle, and I use the, the Leach Highway on a regular basis. I can't tell you the number of times I've sat behind three lanes occupied by trucks, going slowly up a hill, obstructing the traffic coming behind. Now, that's a first world problem, but it does impact on our wellness because, you see, if you're behind there, if you're late for an appointment, you're more liable to have an accident, as indeed I have suffered. And this is also worsening. We have, uh, according to, so to research, <clears throat> in the southwest suburbs, there's a 20% increase, <clears throat> increase above the metro average <clears throat> in traffic. We'll just clear the uh, environmental pollution from my throat. And that this bill, you see, does not actually ease life for us, and nor will it do so for the next 10 years. So we have a danger with this heavy volume of traffic, the housing, the schooling, which is at risk from accidents, uh, access, parking, the conveniences of modern suburban life, and it's worsening. Now, there's reference been made to Mr. Stevenson, Gordon Stevenson, 
Now, interestingly, he actually helped to rebuild London after the war, when it was pretty much flattened by Nazi bombs. He also um, had this concept of redesigning, uh, I think, a town in England, Stevenage, I think it was. If ever you have lived in such planning uh, um, uh, situations, you'll probably hate that name, because getting from A to B, so to buy something from the shop, involves, because it's actually all environmental and planned, doing multiple figures of eight to get from A to B. And you can get lost very easily unless you've lived there for five years. So that type of town planning, I think, uh, is not so very helpful, but he did revolutionise Perth transport. Uh, his 1955 plan for the metropolitan region basically shaped our city today. And in fact, it was mentioned earlier by, by um, uh, Neil Thompson, Honourable Neil Thompson, uh, the 1963 metropolitan region uh, scheme. Now, this is Stevenson in, in full flow. The, and, you know, he, he passed away in 1997, I think it was. I'll just get my reference there. And uh, yet, the, the, uh, the Minister for Planning then, uh, Gordon Kirad, uh, spoke about this and said he helped make Perth the city it is today. His vision was behind the metropolitan scheme, the planning blueprint, which has guided the growth of the metropolitan region since 1963. The scheme has provided for thousands of hectares of regional parkland and a functional transport network. I'll say it again. Thousands of hectares of regional parkland and a functional transport network. In fact, he also planned Biliar. And we've got this multi-party approach, well, multi, the bipartisan, the, a Liberal planning minister, a Labour government, working together for the good of Western Australia. And this led to zoning, planning, well in advancement. You could say that Perth actually led the way at that time. I recall, as a young, as a boy, uh, looking at the traffic on Stirling Highway, where traffic could flow freely. It was, it was just a, a beautiful, almost traffic-free highway, rather than, in times, the congested snail pace uh, transport we have just now. I'm looking also at the transport, the cars we have on the Quinana Freeway, the Mitchell Freeway, uh, the widening there, the, the, the transport conditions, and uh, on a regular basis I wonder why am I sitting in a car? I can get on a scooter and go quicker. So we need to actually pay attention to our, uh, the, the, certainly our environmental life and also to our social life, our, uh, our how do we live uh, in our current place uh, of, of suburban life. And really what it comes down to is we look for a balance, do we not? We look for a place to live happily, securely, but also with the amenities of nature fresh air and water. I call to mind, uh, you, you know that my, my um, love for China, and uh, Shanghai, for example, is uh, known. Beautiful city, uh, mind you, very congested. 22 million people in one town. They have a 30% planning, uh, of, of planning policy. 30% of the area needs to be green, the lung, if you like, and it's actually transformed the city. The water is actually almost, well, not drinkable, but it's as much better than it was before. Uh, the, the quality of life is much better. This is what we need. Uh, considered planning. Now, it's also interesting that um, uh, Stevenson had foreseen the need for an outer harbour. So uh, there can be no argument, I think, that the outer harbour is necessary. I, I don't know about now, but it's certainly something we need to have. Um, Stevenson planned for a symmetrical uh, development, industrial and residential and nature. Uh, the Swan River was the axis, we all know this. The coastal and south was the industrial area. And this is what we need. It's slow, however. Uh, we're looking here at a development of 10 to 15 years in the future. And that's, that's going to be a, a long time for us to wait. We're looking here also at what's the balance, what's the cost to the jobs, what's going to happen in Fremantle. We don't really have an idea. We've got, I, we think it's going to be all right, but as the Honourable Neil Thompson pointed out, have we planned, have we gone through the process? The Westport investigation in 2020 with the five models, what outcome was there there? Have we actually looked at that and, and examined that more properly or have we rushed into this? Now I'm not against the, 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 the Beliar wetland approach, it's a great idea, but my question is have we followed the process, are we sure we've got the best option out of the options that are available? And without being a bit mean-spirited, I, I think back to the Triple C, which I found that uh, 
the whole point of it was that process had not been followed. I still, uh, it still rankles with me that rather than actually using uh, paragraphs A and B in that fateful um, uh, uh, clause 9, we added a, a paragraph C unnecessarily, I thought. And I thought this is typical of the typical planning we've got here. We ought to be careful of this. We need to be mindful of the need to follow process. Process is there for a reason. But we do need a solution now. Now, I drive daily uh, in that area, and I can, I can tell you right now that I'm very happy to consider options because it upsets me every single time. Uh, well, if I'm travelling at five in the morning, I'm happy, but uh, eight o'clock heading to work is not a different matter altogether. The risks of the accidents, the regular accidents, the, and the, the time wasting. We're needing an integrated solution, and I would like to see this as part of an integrated solution. So my request to you in government is that, yes, take this on, but please revise it Let's look at an integrated approach. Let's see how we balance this. There are priorities. As said earlier, this, this wasn't really so urgent to happen right now. Safe access zones, that's urgent. Animal rights legislation, that, that's, that's cool. Um, we need to look at the, 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 how do we help the homeless in, in our state, in our, in our city. That's urgent. Um, how do we manage those who are being assaulted? I, I read today in the paper about this uh, uh, the sexual predator in school who is, has assaulted five and is allowed to continue at school while the people he's assaulted have to put up with this or to leave. I find that intolerable. That needs urgent action. This, less so. We need to work through the issues, do we not? Uh, not around them. And again, I point out the triple C uh, as an example. Not find, find options, work together, work as a unit, rather than this graceless, we've got the numbers, we're going to force this through. It, it does no credit, and I, I would beg you to reconsider that approach. It, it makes me also wonder if perhaps uh, there's an urgency here because people don't trust that things are going to go the right way. I would suggest in that case, if there's a stress and urgency, and you know I'm going to say this, sir, members, it might be helpful for the, the, the government to use some cannabis. It's very helpful in relaxing the approach. <laughs> but don't ask me to supply it. I won't do that. So we, we need to go for the established processes. And see, the lack of established process is what brought my rage to incandescence when it was forced through. I would beg you not to go down that particular path as well. We need consultation. Now, a two-year consultation, which is what it would probably take, $25 million to spend that, yes, okay. But then it gives the chance for the public to be involved because the public is going to be affected by this. We need to take into account not just what the current ideas are, what the principles are, we need to look at what our population needs, our electorate needs. How are we serving the people we have sworn to serve? Now, this reserve, which is going to be made permanent, if you like, uh, very difficult to undo, I don't disagree with that, but is it the best option? Can we do any better? I think we ought to think of that. Because it seems to me, at times, there's a pattern here of riding roughshod over the process. And this disturbs me. It disturbs me greatly, because it means that we're not actually engaging in the democratic process. Perhaps it's the freedom of not needing to engage in democratic process, that you can get things through that have been banned or blocked for so long. Possibly that's the case. I would beg you to reconsider. It's not best practice. This is not what we expect in democracy. Right. So, trust the Premier, take your time, look at the row 8 and 9, and there's no absolute need right now to delete that reserve. What about in 10 years' time new technologies come along? Who knows? Those advances might allow us to do what today is impossible. There may be different choices, different options, better options perhaps. So while I'll be very happy not to have row 8 or 9, and this has been promised already, there's no need to make any change, that has been promised. Making this irreversible is perhaps a step too far. I wouldn't disagree, but the thing is, I don't know. And if you haven't gone to the planning and taken the time, neither do you. We need the proof. We need to use the processes and test them. Or 
They don't trust the process. We don't trust the planning process. Just like uh, recently with the Triple C, we didn't trust the committees. They're not doing the right job. Okay, I think I'm no, I, I know better. Therefore, I'll rud, ride roughshod over you. I'll make a, a change. Do I trust the process? This is a fundamental question. The processes are there for a very good reason. We've used them. We must respect the process. But this pattern I see is being repeated. Now, it could also be said, for the people, we need to address traffic congestion. And that's going to remain for some time. We need to respect the need for road safety, community safety, and also not to tie the hands of this government or future government. Freedom is important. Freedom of choice. The freedom to make a change if a change is appropriate. Keep your options open. I would contend that in this particular question, bearing in mind that I agree with the government on this, both sides are right. The outer harbour, foreseen by Gordon Stevenson, and in planning now, and the capacity for row eight or nine, both are reasonable choices. Pros and cons need to be included. The unions would be very keen, especially the MUA, to be sure that the, the choice for the outer harbour is a good one. We need to work with them. We need to find fair and equitable solutions. What about automation in the new harbour? What about the management of Frio? For row eight or nine, we think about the ring road that Stevenson was creating. Maybe we ought to expand that idea. Maybe, maybe we ought to get infrastructure WA looking at this more closely, as I'm sure they have been. Well, in fact, if you look at some of the, the, the articles there, let's get this one up here as well. They had a word to say about that. Infrastructure WA. A recent report said that one should keep mem okay. uh, its foundations for a stronger tomorrow and suggests that Fremantle still has a viable future as a port and that the road network into and out of Fremantle should be optimised to make the most of that future. This is Infrastructure WA. I think we need to pay attention to them. They know what they're talking about. 25 years of experience, $1 billion worth of programmes uh, supervised. They are qualified. I also call to mind, speaking against this, that row eight or nine, as I remember very well, would have ended abruptly at Stirling Highway uh, at the, at the High Street, and I can imagine the chaos that would have caused. There was no planning there either. I think we can do it better. And I would beg you to consider how to do this better. You have a mandate. It has to come through. You have the numbers. But I beg you to consider the process that you are undergoing just now. Is this the best way of doing this? I contend not, and I would ask you to think about that. And as said earlier, no matter what we decide, history will always judge us better than we judge ourselves today.